If you've been following my channel for long enough, you'll remember that I used to make videos exclusively about Edsworld, Easter eggs and secrets. In fact, I even named my channel after it. Though the project was successful, I eventually ran out of videos to make, so I started talking about some of the more interesting aspects of the Edsworld canon. And one rebranding of the channel later, I think that shift in content style has been well received. However, there is still a ton of little secrets littered throughout each episode, as well as plenty of trivia regarding each and every animation. And I find that knowing more about the content you watch can absolutely help to improve your experience. So I thought to document 10 of my favourite interesting facts that I've come across over the years. Keep in mind that if you're a diehard Edsworld fan, or especially if you follow my channel closely, you've probably already heard about most of these, but if you stick around long enough, you may just learn something new. There are so many more that I wanted to cover, and if you want me to make another video like this in the future, then let me know. With that said, here are 10 things you probably didn't know about Ed's World. The colourful hoodie worn by each of the main characters is a huge part of their identity and characterisation, but did you know that both Matt and Tord wore black hoodies at one point? Tord only wore his black hoodie for some of his first appearances, but Matt had his black hoodie all the way up until Santa Claus. Speaking of older Ed's world, Tom used to be Swedish. Whatever, I'm gonna go watch TV. Us? Uh, safe Christmas? I guess we'll just have to judge who's naughty and who's nice. What? Who? How? Why? When? Ed always liked to draw and animate his friends, but Tom didn't actually have a working microphone when the show first started. So they got some Swedish Canadian guy called Alex to do all of the voice work for him. In the logo for the Edsworld YouTube account, Matt is giving Ed bunny ears and giving Tom devil horns. And believe it or not, this might actually be a reference to Tom being demonic or possessed in some way. If you think that's a bit far-fetched, it was confirmed by Tom's voice actor that Tom was planned from the very beginning to be possessed by a demon, and that demon helps to characterise his trademark anger. The whole being possessed character trait was expanded upon heavily in the Legacy era, as you very may well know but the secret was hiding in plain sight all along. The cowboys from Salunatics actually make a cameo in the end. They were the founding members of the estate agent that Tom bought his flat from. This is just one of many, many, many references to older episodes and one-off characters littered throughout the end. Many of you will know that Space Face was the last real episode that Ed Gould worked on but he never quite finished all of the animation on part 1 before his unfortunate passing. Because of this, the new animator, Paul Tavord, decided to throw in a little reference to mark this shift. When they get to the bridge, the overhead light above Ed flickers out, referencing his death during production. At the same time, an alien with Paul's unibrow walks across the screen, signalling the end of Ed's final animation and the move into Paul's new style. A pretty sweet little tribute if you ask me. Ever thought that Power Ed was an odd name for a superhero episode? Wouldn't the name Super Ed make a lot more sense? Well, Ed's World already has a video called Super Ed. It was actually an earlier episode parodying the British children's show called Super Ted. Anyone else remember that show? Used to watch it all the time in primary school between Horrid Henry and Number Jacks. British TV was weird. We don't often see the characters dating each other as much as the fans would want it for some reason, however there is an official relationship between two characters, Eduardo and the actress from Movie Makers, Laurel. This is basically confirmed in an official comic strip called Ex-Girlfriend which shows Eduardo heartbroken over an image of him and Laurel. I've really enjoyed working with you guys. I think we make a great team. You know who else Eduardo knows? 
the grandma character. Here's a picture of her inside Eduardo's house. If you've seen some of Tom Ridgewell's other work, you'll notice that there is some character crossover between Eswald and some of his other shows. Ever thought this little girl was familiar? Well, that's Kate from the show Crash Zoom making a cameo. Of course, Eswald also crosses into the Crash Zoom world as well. Here's Tom making a visit in his monster form. Don't believe that's Tom? Here's his arm. I've talked about this crossover so much in the past, but that's only because there are so many references within both shows. This was probably to help develop an expanded universe between these two shows, and the fabled Super Average, which may or may not still be in development. And that also has an incredibly in-depth history, which I've also talked about quite a lot. There was nearly a sequel to What the Future. In a talk at VidFest 2017, Matt stated that Ed had storyboarded an opening scene for a sequel to What the Future Before His Death. Can you imagine what sort of story would come out of that? Maybe it begins in the world where Matt is the dictator, or maybe it takes place in the soda-free future where Tord is the dictator, and we get to see what the world would be like under the power of Red Leader. I would have loved to see this idea explored further, and luckily we have the beginning in the friend comic strip to help fill in those gaps. And that was 10 Edsworld facts you may or may not know. What's your favourite obscure fact that I didn't mention? Let me know in a comment below.